the five tips to make you a better software engineer. That's what this video is all about. I want to start with, well, normally I start with, you know, big why, but I think this is pretty self-explanatory, right? We all want to be a better software engineer. We all want to be a great software engineer specifically. Let me make that clear. Not just a better one. We want to make you a great software engineer. So I guess that's the why here. We all want to be a great software engineer. Let's, let's talk about this. And it starts with a story um, back in my career, earlier in my career, uh, I thought that I was a great developer in the beginning. And I really did. And I, it was interesting though to look back and see though that I should have saw the signs very early instead of waiting as long as I did, but I didn't see any of the accolades, the promotions, the responsibilities. I didn't see any of the com like comments on my code. Like I didn't, I didn't see what I should have saw. And I realized that there's a lot of different things I was missing. And here are five things from some of the, here are five specific tips for things I was missing back in the beginning that then took me from what I now know was I was a good developer. I had, I had my shit together, but I wasn't a great developer. I didn't do all the extra things necessary to be a great one. And now that I know I'm a great one and I know what it takes to be a great one. And that sounds, I'll leave it at that, but I know what it takes to be a great one. I want to show, share those with you now. Now I want to say this as well. If you have ever felt stuck, right, and you feel like you're a good developer, but you want to make that jump to great developer, and you want help doing that, well, I have a product I've created called Coding Career Fastlane, and if it sounds like something interesting to you, then reach out because it's all about helping you accelerate your career wherever you're at. Especially if you're in a good, you think you're a good developer, you want to become a great developer, or even then you're just looking to up your career and become really good at what you're doing. Talk to me down below. I put a link, message me. We'll talk about it. Let's get into some content. The first is we're going to talk about the plan. This is the first out of the five tips. One of the things I realized was I didn't have a plan, specifically with goals and steps to get there. I had this great idea that like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll do this associate thing for six months to a year and I'll move right on up to developer and then I'll go to senior and then I'll go to principal and I had this idea of a goal in my mind, but I truly didn't have any steps to get there and I had no actionable items. And so what I'm gonna encourage you here, when we talk about becoming a great developer, not just good developer, we have goals we've laid out in front of us. We know what the mountaintop looks like. And then we write down the steps and we figure out the steps to, okay, we see the mountaintop, it is going from associate to developer. What's it gonna to take to get there? Okay, well, First step is I can ask my boss. Second step is I can look at myself. Third step, I can look at my peers. Okay, fourth step is collect all the data. Once I have the data, implement the rest of the plan and figure out, okay, I need to focus on learning a language. I need to focus on learning Angular. I need to become a subject matter expert. I need to get more involved in other communities. I need to start doing more than what I'm doing. I need to stay till five every day because people notice I'm going home. You start building out a plan like that and physically writing it down because until you write it down and follow each step, you're just going to go with where the wind takes you and you're going to stay a good developer. And as long as you're happy with that, that's where you'll be at. But when you want to make that jump to be a great developer, that's what you start to need or that's what you need to start doing is build this plan, have the steps so that we can repeat and move forward and keep going up the mountaintop. There's a lot more to go up the mountaintop um, that I cover in the Coding Career Fast Lane, but this is the first tip and the first main thing is you have to have a plan. All right. Now, the second thing, when we when we talk about the tip from going from a good developer to great developer was, as I referenced this actually in that last video, and I kind of batched a bunch of these all very close together, go ahead and check out the last video about um, learning 10 times, learning programming 10 times faster. I talk about a lot of great things in there, but the second tip to move to great developer is knowing how you learn, knowing your style, knowing the type of learner you are so that you can pick up things faster than anyone else around you. Now to do that, you're gonna have to know, right? If you like to read, if you like videos, you like tutorials, you like projects, you're gonna have to know a bunch of these things and then you're gonna have to do repetition because learning is repetition. And so check out that last video, but the tip here is 
know how you learn and know effectively how you learn because us just saying here like, oh yeah, I can spend 10 hours on this and I'll learn it is great. But if we know that we can make you faster and you can speed, speed the process up 10 times and learn stuff in two hours, one hour, well now we're getting somewhere. And that's when you can learn faster stuff, learn stuff faster than all your peers and it really will take off for you. So first two tips, plan and your learning style. The second, or sorry, third, is the imposter syndrome. Now, I'm gonna reference this also coming up in a new video, another video coming up soon. I talked about it in the last video a little bit, also about the imposter syndrome. But it's knowing this, in this tip, and I, I didn't think, um, <laughs> I didn't think anyone else had it in the beginning. Like, I really thought it was just me, and I didn't belong, and the something I had to acknowledge to finally get me over the hump was that I had to understand that everyone had it and everyone showed it in different ways and that everyone's going to be battling it. And to become a great developer, you have to know what it looks like for yourself and how to deal with it. Now that's really easy to say, but really hard to do. So I'm going to encourage you. If you want to learn more, there's a lot more I'm going to do on this topic. Leave a comment or question. Um, and ask for a video if you want more on the imposter syndrome. But the idea is we're going to need to do know what it looks like to deal with it for yourself. Now, I talked about also some quick wins in the last video. So if you want to go to the learning 10 times faster, I talked about some stuff in there. But let me give you something on what to do for this today because I want to make sure you walk away a little bit of imposter syndrome stuff. There's two things I'm going to recommend to you today. Um, and it goes it's like this. The first thing when you deal with the imposter syndrome is to focus on one thing at a time. If something's coming in and you're in a meeting and you're freaking out because it has to deal about your code, don't worry about the hundred things around you. Don't worry about the emails you have to send. Don't worry about how you're gonna sound there or what your code next project. Focus on that one thing and write a to-do list to focus on it. Because what I see with the imposter syndrome with my students is they get they can they can let the imposter syndrome get the better of them because they're not detail oriented in what they have to do next. And then they let their mind race to over here and then back to over there. So do a simple to-do list, write out everything you have, especially when you feel this, I don't belong, feel, write down that list so you know what you gotta do to belong. Whether that's doing your code, learning something, going forward. The second thing I'm gonna offer today for you to try and do is a brain dump. This is a really good tip when I became, um, when, I, when I got into that great, uh, developer area. It was a lot because I also knew how to deal with it, but this was one of the things I used was a brain dump. And the idea is much like you, you have in a logging system in a server, right? Something's gone wrong. The system's aired out. What do we do? We go look at the log files and the log files tell us this happened, this happened and this, and then we go, oh, there's a weird request that came in. And you go through the rest of the log and then you look and go, that was it. That one request messed everything up. When we talk about brain dumps, we talk about you sitting down writing everything out thoroughly of whatever it is you're thinking, you're feeling, what's going on. That way we can get out every thought out of your head, every last one of them. And then we can look at them and say, okay, what, what's the problem here? What is holding me back? And we can make a decision based off what we see of what to do next. But half the time when all the thoughts are just running through your head, you can't capture them all until you write them all down and do a brain dump. So, I encourage you to try those two things out. Um, the reason tip overall, the tip of imposter syndrome is here to become a great developer is truly, it's not always just knowing it, but it's also knowing how to deal with it because the great ones will know how to deal with it. The good developers don't, and it's gonna worry them and scare them for the rest of their lives. And I think that's one of the best things I've ever done is the imposter syndrome for myself, is learning how to deal with it. Okay, tip number four here. Fail faster to learn faster. And what I mean by this is, well, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you must ask questions to do this. You must put yourself out there to others and be willing to ask the dumb questions. Be willing to go to your peers, go to your mentors, go to your coaches and ask the questions. And if you're not in an environment like that, put yourself in an environment like that. And if that means you have to put yourself in a community or somewhere like Coding Career Fastlane, or even just put yourself in a network to find this place where you can ask these questions safely, then do that.
But I'm telling you right now, if you're not failing fast enough, you're not going to learn fast enough. And what was really interesting in my career, when I, I talk about, especially from the beginning, the story of like I was going really slow in the beginning, I wasn't getting what I wanted, so I started implementing some of these tips. Well, this is one of the ones I implemented, and this is when I saw the greatest results. If I was willing to fail faster than anyone. I was willing to try to make a framework, try to do too many projects, try to do, okay, I won't back off on that one. You're not, you don't have to overdo yourself. Um, but like I was trying to do a ton. I was trying to do as much as I could. I would go home and use my time at home to try to do extra projects, to try to take on more, to learn more, to fail a little bit more. I was also trying to help other people out. I was trying to help groups. I was trying to take on a ton because I knew the more opportunities I got, the more failures I had, the more experiences I would get. And the more experiences I would get gave me the worth and gave me the knowledge that allowed me to become a great developer. And so what can you do when I say fail faster to learn faster? Well, you can do this. Um, first off, um, watch the last video on learning 10 steps fat or learning 10 times faster. Um, analyze what you have been doing and then what can you change, try to change going forward and then actually implement it. That's what you can do after this. If you have questions on it, reach out. I am going to leave it at that, but fail faster to learn faster. And the fifth tip is readable code over anything else. Now, if those of you don't know, um, Uncle Bob, or is it Dr. Bob? Uncle Bob, um, Clean Code, uh, fantastic book, speaks volumes to the industry, and I right, just go read that first off. But I'm gonna tell you this. Um, in the beginning, I believed that I needed to write the most elegant, efficient code in the world, that was pristine and had the biggest and best functions. And like, I went over the top a little bit. But what I've learned is that truly to take that next step and where this tip stands is you really need readable code because truly if someone can't come in and look at your code and understand what the hell it's doing without an ad and they have to ask a bunch of questions, you've done something wrong. And if you're putting comments in there to save yourself, you've still done something wrong. And even then, you must you must learn to reach out to people and ask them to look at your code, get code reviews, and work with them. You know, figure out if you have enough spaces. Are you properly naming your variables? Are you naming your functions a good name? Is the logic working? Do you have it all coming together. Do you have small commits so they can read it better? Do you, are you committing often? Which is actually a very important uh, thing inside of that to commit small and to commit often. So when people are reviewing your PRs, we can see step by step, readably, readable code to what the hell is going on. Now, I would say this too, something that helps within getting your code readable is being extremely familiar with your tools, whether it's Visual Studio Code or, um, WebStorm or IntelliJ, whatever it might be, <clears throat> make sure you're familiar with your IDE because, or text editor, I know some people get turned on that, those two terms being switched. Um, but overall, when we talk about readable code, it's being fast with your environment, knowing how to make small and often change or commits so people can read them, making sure your code's actually readable. That is an extremely important thing because at the end of the day, if someone can't work with you, they are working against you, then you're doing it all wrong. And that was something when I took the next step when people could sit down and write code with me and my code was readable from the very beginning. It spoke volumes to where I was going and to what I was doing. And at the same time, when I built a framework called meanstackjs.com, Literally, I had to, if I couldn't make something other people could use, no one would ever use it. And actually, in its prime, I think it was getting like a thousand downloads a month, which is fantastic. But it just goes to show that you need readable code, otherwise, no one's going to use it. Overall, there are some really good honorable mentions I want to cover here in a second. Actually, I'll cover them now and then I'll give the summary because I don't want to do it backwards. There's a couple honorable mentions that I want to give you guys today. Um, and I might just do a video on them. But honorable mentions and other tips to make you great developers. 
is having a bigger and better network, having mentors and coaches, having great projects that you're working on outside of work, learning more languages, and having developer rules set up and in place so that you follow a set procedure in life. Now, overall for today's video, uh, having a plan is absolutely important and writing it down, knowing how you learn, knowing about the imposter syndrome, what it looks like for you and how to deal with it is absolutely key going forward. Failing faster, learn faster, and readable code above all else. These five things will help you get from a good developer to a great developer. Now, do you have to implement them all at once? No. But if you feel like you would like help accelerating your career with the Coding Career Fast Lane and these five tips specifically, I encourage you to check out the link down below on the Coding Career Fast Lane. It's a service I've built to help you accelerate your career, whether you're in the beginning or you're at advanced stage. It'll help you build out a plan to join the fast lane. That's it for today's video. If you have any comments, questions, please feel free to reach out, check out the link below. And until next time, I'll see you guys all later.